Dude, Luke, the printer's still ah. busted, man. What the fuck? everybody, welcome to episode 115 of the Topless Robot Podcast. My name is Ryan. Some call me Brooks. I'm Dan. I'm Kaylin. And hey, we've got everyone. What in the world? What in the Peter Lorre are you fucking doing with your goddamn eyeballs there? <laughs> that was really creepy looking. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh... We unfortunately have to start this episode on a solemn note, though we've already laughed at your fucking P- Peter Lorre ass eyes. And then, uh, uh, the original uh, actor uh, who played Darth Vader has passed today. Uh, yeah. David Prowse, uh, the body of uh, Darth Vader is dead unfortunately but i mean it was inevitable he's an old guy um and something i did not know he was in uh clockwork orange was he really yes he was yeah as a young man as a young buff boy he was in a clockwork orange and apparently that is he attributes uh his um being in that film as is, is, you know basically creating his career opening a lot of doors for him never actually seen a clockwork orange wow really really good i'm surprised you haven't seen it yeah that's, that's a big surprise to hear from you i would figure that you like would have just a shelf of kubrick no no um i like i like um i mean i like the shining even though i like the book uh but uh, as far as Kubrick goes, there's not a whole lot that I like. I'm like down to watch all the time, you know. Like, it is you know, I'm not gonna fucking. It's Friday night. Time to get fucking blazed and watch yeah, Barry Lyndon. Definitely not. Definitely, yeah. It, there's definitely a Kubrick mood, uh, and it's not often <laughs> because his films tend to be a little draining. I feel the same way. Yeah, I have to take for me so I can watch Kubrick films whenever I please. <laughs> you have no power here. <laughs> <laughs> Stanley. <laughs> so rest in peace, Darth Vader. Uh, sad to see him go. He uh, left a legendary mark, and his story on its own is legendary uh, in learning that he was not the voice of Darth Vader at the screening of Star Wars. And the way he kind of got fucked out of credit and everything, too. This I'm, is a little sad. What is it, I wonder what his voice sounded like. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember. I don't, I don't no. know. I am your father. <laughs> <laughs> he's got your that. Father. He's got that. Uh, oh fuck! Who did the the voice of uh, uh, the Mad Hatter in the original animated uh, uh, Alice in Wonderland? It, it, oh, he's, oh yeah, the face Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's that. It's that voice, don't you know? It, it's it's the voice that that's like this, and he's always kind of crazy, and he's very well known for having this voice. Uh, and I cannot, for the life, of me remember the name of him. I, I but he's I was going for Edwin. the Miami Connection. Edwin, that's right. The Miami Connection. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Um. So yeah, uh, prolific career, uh, prolific. Uh, uh roles and uh yeah left his mark for sure um also i wanted to uh start out by uh giving a little shout out to metabucks uh the uh team over at metabucks uh, gave us a little uh shout out or, or uh, reached out to us and uh i i like what they're making uh there's some cool stuff uh they do like um skits video game skits uh machinima-esque kind of things and uh also like uh 
role play let's plays in GTA five and Red Dead and stuff like that. And it's pretty funny. Uh, so check them out. Uh, it's uh, M-E-T-A-B-U-C-K-S. So uh, now that we got uh, that out of the way, have you guys seen the news about Kadabra? I did. This was about weird. Kadabra from Pokemon. Pokemon. I didn't even realize that Nintendo has been not allowed to use Kadabra <laughs> since 2000. Oh, yeah, I knew, I knew about that. Only in the card game. Kadabra does still show up in uh, the video games. Oh, does it? Yeah. So they can't do printed cards. But uh, so because Yuri Geller, a litigious piece of shit fucking mentalist, and I should probably be careful with my words in saying he's a litigious piece of shit. Um, but uh, yeah. Yeah. I so like I had heard this guy's name before. I recognize his name, but I had no idea who he was or what he did. So I did a little oh, yo. little reading today. Uh, you were in for a treat, I'm sure. Oh my lord, this man. Uh so uh there's an entire uh section on his Wikipedia uh on litigation and copyright claims. Uh, Geller has litigated or threatened legal action against some of his uh, critics with mixed success. These included libel allegations against James Randi and illusionist Gerard uh, Majax. Um, so, I mean, that's not surprising. James Randi probably debunked him a number of times. Yeah, I remember. I remember watching him. Uh, do that once, I think. I think on TV. Apparently, this is the guy who's known for spoon bending. I'm surprised that I don't see a lawsuit against the Matrix or, you know, the Wachowskis uh, in this uh, Wikipedia article. Mm. It's a weird nation in a- Avatar. The spoon nation. <laughs> <laughs> He's a spoon bender. <laughs> that was my I have been oatmeal. <laughs> The so, totally real power of bending things with my mind, but I can only do it to spoons. <laughs> a very strong psychic connection to spoon, yeah. or maybe even sometimes spork. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I ask for money and belief, please. <laughs> So yeah, in in November 2000, Geller sued video game company Nintendo for 60 million pounds over the Pokemon species Jungerer, localized in English as Kadabra, uh, which he claimed was an unauthorized appropriation of his identity. The Pokemon in question has psychic abilities and carries a bent spoon. Geller also claimed that the star on Kadabra's forehead and the lightning patterns on its abdomen are symbolisms popular with the Waffen SS, or Nazi Germany, of Nazi Germany. The katakana for the character's name is visually similar to the transliteration of Geller's own name into Japanese. He is quoted as saying, Nintendo turned me into an evil occult Pokemon character. Nintendo (laughs) stole my identity by using my name and my signature image. I did not realize that he was some sort of psychic fox. Uh, Pokemon anime director and storyboard artist... uh, Masamitsu uh, Hidaka confirmed in an interview that Kadabra would not be used on a Pokemon trading card until an agreement was reached on the case. In November of 2020, Geller issued an apology and agreed to allow cards depicting Kadabra to be printed, though the last Kadabra card released was in the Skyridge e-reader set uh, 2002-2003. You know, looking at it, they do look very similar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm worried that people will not understand that I am famous and I need to have attention once again. So what's... I hope to be on Ellen talk show again with Spoon. <laughs> now, like this, you know, we've seen these sorts of uh, litigation, you know, these sorts of lawsuits before. This is nothing new and uh, honestly it holds a little bit of merit, I suppose. Except for the whole Nazi imagery thing, that he's just off the fucking deep end. But then I got to this property section. 
On February 11th, 2009, Geller purchased the uninhabited 100 meter by 50 meter Lamb Island off the eastern coast of Scotland, previously known for its witch trials and beaches that Robert Louis Stevenson is said to have described in his novel Treasure Island. Geller claims that buried on the island is Egyptian treasure brought there by Skota, the mythological half-sister of Tutankhamun in Irish mythology 3,500 years ago. He claimed that he will find the treasure through dowsing. Geller also claimed to have strengthened the mystical powers of the island by burying there a crystal orb once belonging to Albert Einstein. This guy's insane. Or... Is the opposite, <laughs> I mean, it's or the first thing he's not I that? Don't believe you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and now, and then, this was a fun thing as well. In 2014, a 12 foot tall statue of a gorilla made from approximately 40,000 metal spoons was unveiled in Geller's Berkshire Garden by the Duke of Kent with the intention of possibly relocating it to Great Ormond Street Hospital. The statue was welded by sculptor Alfie Bradley and funded by the British Ironworks Center of Oz. Oswestry. According to Bradley, many of the spoons were donated by school children around the, from around the world. Speaking at the unveiling, Geller said, and this quote should tell you everything you need to know about this garbage human being. This will not raise money for charity. It will do something better. It will amaze sick children. <laughs> Wow. Apparently <laughs> all they need to get over their cancer. It's like a really weird uh oh what's that Robin Williams? Yeah. Patch Adams. Yeah, yeah. a Pat, really Pat weird Adams. Patch Adams. Like <laughs> you need to <laughs> amaze <laughs> the children. Laughter is not the best medicine. Awe is. <laughs> the moment it gets relocated and all the children are looking out their windows to see the statue, he just points at it and it just folds <laughs> into itself. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so if it's entirely made out of spoons, do you, you think he could, like, control it? Like, <laughs> like, a, like, a, like a golem? It, yes! Yeah, <laughs> it is my I mean, spoon golem! Spoon golem. <laughs> Behold my spoon bending powers! <laughs> and at least one thing you can say for, for Yuri Geller, I'm sure you guys have all heard the uh, I'm out of spoons thing, you know, like... That that representation, that man must never be out of spoons. Do you think he has his spoons too big? Because he has psychic a connection to all spoon across the world. <laughs> <laughs> God, I, like I imagine just... the opposite. Every time he has one of his gag spoons in his house and he picks up a bowl, like a little scoop of his cereal, it just bends in half and he drops <laughs> his meal. <laughs> I do not take cereal or soup. <laughs> he's just having he's having a particularly <laughs> stressful day and all of a sudden just a normal utensil that he's trying to have some fucking goulash with just like becomes a, a trebuchet just <laughs> fuck. every time he eats cereal he just has to precariously balance the bits on the side of a knife <laughs> <laughs> I pay wife to uh, feed me breakfast. <laughs> he's just sitting there. He's got like a fucking, like a bucket of spoons. Fuck. <laughs> Fuck. So apparently what, <laughs> what kind of created his career was apparently an appearance on uh, Carson on uh, late night with Johnny Carson, uh, where he did nothing. His powers didn't work. And uh, because so this paradoxically lended validity to his potential powers, because if it was just a magic trick, of course, he'd just be able to do it at any time. But if he's low on energy or something like that, then he and he just can't perform. God, it, it would just be an embarrassment to go on national television and have it not work. I cannot do it, Mr. Carson. I am out of mana. <laughs> <laughs> I am ooh. Fortunately, ooh. terminal ethers are provided in the green room. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the blue portion? I need the blue portion. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Um, on the topic of mana, however, changing gears a little bit, uh, 
uh, did you guys hear that um, Bob Ross paintings are going to adorn new Magic the Gathering cards uh, as uh, land and and uh, stuff like that. So uh, that'll be really cool. That's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. They're just gonna be filled with. I see they're they're trying to cash in on that Thomas Kincaid collectible market with Magic the Gathering. <laughs> oh no. We're going to see old ladies with Magic the Gathering cards, shadow box. And put on- <laughs> I just love my precious moments. Magic the Gathering cards. My hubbles. This is one of my favorite pieces. And that house doesn't become a home until you framed a magic card. <laughs> I keep these in my car for good luck. Home, home is where the magic is. This, is. this is another one that's close to my heart, Yugen the Spirit Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> Live, land, love. <laughs> we turned our weekly bridge night into Magic the Gathering night. Oh my God! And can you imagine? Anymore? Can you imagine? Like once we get into like our seventies and eighties and shit like that, like it, it's not going to be bridge clubs. It's going to be Pokemon clubs. Or oh yeah, fucking daily Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I'm, I would be, I, you know, that, that actually makes me stoked for retirement homes. It's going to be a whole bunch of fucking nerds. <laughs> right. <laughs> and yeah. then I can, you can pull the ultimate bit. And when you have a character die, you can just die at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> if you play an MMO in a nursing home, it's called Prunescape. <laughs> <laughs> also, we play in Runescape when I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the uh, you never want to come to grandma's land party anymore. (laughs) I like, I like the prospect that has just been built in my head of themed uh assisted living homes. So, like, it would be you know, like, say you were really big into World of Warcraft, then you could go to like a World of Warcraft themed uh nursing home. All of the all of the uh, the nurses have, have like exclamation points above their head. <laughs> or and when um, you talk to them when they give you when they give you your pills, you have to like take the pills and they turn into a question mark. Or or a, a Pokemon themed uh, nursing home, and all the nurses are named Joy. <laughs> oh, well, we don't go to the Call of Duty Black Ops nursing home. <laughs> <laughs> It sets off grandpa's uh, PTSD. All we play is risk and commit war crimes. <laughs> I yeah, I told you about Undertale lately. <laughs> <laughs> when you ring my doorbell, it plays Megalovania, a classic oldie. <laughs> My grandson stopped taking my calls when I wanted him to join my raid. <laughs> oh man. Uh, Being old's gonna be great for yeah. us. Yeah, you know, the world dies before that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Jury's still out on that one. Um I so we are now pretty much a week away from my 38th birthday. And um, I uh, have subconsciously, like I, it's not even like intentionally dwelling on aging or anything like that. Uh, But Jasmine kind of pointed it out that several times over the past couple of days, I have brought up age and remarked on age so apparently something's going on in my subconscious going like holy shit dude you're almost 40 what the fuck are you doing Uh, and like realizing that you know i'm gonna have this moment where i'm pushing 60 and realizing that like i i'm still not an adult and uh, (laughs) you know like i don't i'm never gonna have kids and 
I can't see myself growing out of my nerd hobbies or anything like that. They've been with me my entire life. I'm not going to like magically stop liking Ninja Turtles, right? Like I'm I'm not going to magically not want to play video games one day. Uh, what like I I feel like I don't. And maybe it's just a matter of the age of the industry, but I feel like I don't know or of a lot of 16, 70 year old gamers or, you know, like I can't think of those people who, who didn't have kids lived to their sixties and seventies and stayed on their hobbies, like music and video games and shit like that. Like you don't hear those stories. So yeah, it's because they all died, died happy. <laughs> I mean, at least in the case of musicians, there's a shitload of old musicians out there, dude. No, that's true. Really only like, I mean, uh, no, you're right. You're right. I was going to say only people who find success really seem to do it to, uh, to an old age. But like, you know, at the rhythm room, we get all sorts of old blues players who have always, you know, played the blues, even though they've always done it in a local band. So that there are people who, who do and it, but I've done some uh, a okay. really part time thing. Yeah. I've, I've done some open mics where at like different bars where all of the people are 30 years older than me. <laughs> I just said, the one open mic night I went to to watch Tyler's band, he was the only person, the, his band had the only people that weren't great, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> where was this? It was at, um, Focal? Focal. Oh, uh, right? Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it was Focal. And yeah, everyone was old. <laughs> Every every single open mic that I I have performed at, <laughs> the majority of people that have performed on stage besides me were uh, over fifty. <laughs> wow, yeah, and I mean, I guess I'm I'm less uh, concerned with the, like the music aspect of it because yeah, there are plenty of uh, examples of people who <laughs> continue to play well into their sixties. I mean, my Graham is a great example of that. She, you know, as far as I know, still plays hammer dulcimer and, you know, like, uh, d- d- stuff like that. And she's 80 something at this point, but, um, you know, just more the, I don't know. Video. I, it's as much as I am definitely an adult, I don't feel like an adult. And I don't know how that's going to evolve going into, you know, like my 60s and 70s and stuff like that. Like it, 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 other people who is so one thing that kind of threw me for a loop um, or made me think about this kind of stuff is uh, last night, Jasmine and I went on uh, a uh, little Brendan Fraser trip. And uh, we watched uh, With Honors and we watched School Ties. So uh, With Honors was 1994. School Ties was 1992. And the French teacher in School Ties uh, is the dude who, like, he's a character actor uh, who you would recognize if you saw him. Um, In an episode of House, he was a super sick guy who... Uh, took a bunch of people hostage in order to get diagnosed by house. Um, and the guy looked old, like, you know, receding hairline just looked like an old guy. Like he looked less gray than he did in that episode of house because this was 1992, but he just looked old. And I said, I was like, I bet he's younger in, in this movie than I am. And or I I think I said that he would be around the same age. And Jasmine looked it up. And sure enough, he was 35 in that movie. And he just just leveled up to Max pretty early in life. (laughs) Yeah, right. Like, I don't know. It's I don't know if it's like a. Weird perspective thing or or what It, it just feels weird. You know, like, what is, what are, what are my fifties going to be like if these are my thirties? And I used to look at, you know, 30 and 40 year olds as like people who knew 
drastically more than I did and uh, had their shit together and had kind of stepped away from all the shit that I was interested in. I would never expect to be interested, you know, in my teens or 20s, I would never expect to be interested in uh, the same things as a 40 year old. Right. Like I would never expect our interests to align except maybe music because music kind of transcends everything. But even then you're surprised when you find out that like you're, uh, I uh, dated a girl whose parents had, you know, this uh, CD collection. I'm looking through their CD collection. It's got like prodigy and just shit like that. And it, you know, they were old. And so it seemed <laughs> weird to me that they would have prodigy albums, but you know, it, what, I, uh, I don't know where I'm going with that. It's just weird. There, there, there isn't a template for us to be like old people. Cause it seemed like for a while there was, you know, like, uh, well, you know, my dad got married and had kids and bought a house and blah, blah, blah. But like we were given the option to not accept that as the end game. And most of us took it. So I'm with you on there. I'm 31 and I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing. Yeah. I, think, I, think I just opened a fucking savings account for, for the first time in eight <laughs> years this week. So. <laughs> I think that's probably the, been the most shocking thing for me. Um, just, you know, becoming a, getting into adulthood is just realizing that literally no one knows what the fuck they're doing and they're just working. <laughs> they're just doing the best they can. <laughs> And anyone like anyone that pretends like they know what they're doing is full of shit. So, or they are following a cult like screed that uh, is giving them instructions on how to live their life, and they're so certain of that uh, of those instructions that uh, everyone else needs to follow them as well. They're amazed that not everyone is following the same rule book. One what could you possibly be alluding to? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Did I did that come off uh, anti-religion? That uh, it, it it was absolutely in, uh, intended to be anti-religion. Abs one hundred percent. I I am anti-religion. Is it weird that there's five dudes, five dudes in their thirties, all talking, and none of us have any have children? I mean, that's I'm not thirty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm almost there. <laughs> yeah. Still statistically, three, three dudes in their thirties and two dudes in their late twenties or not even. Yeah. Yeah. Late twenties. Uh, cause Dan, late you're 20s, what? 26, yeah. 27, 27. Okay. Like the Marlboros. I've got six months left of my twenties. <laughs> I feel like I should get a do over though for my, my 30th year. Cause I had to spend most of it inside. <laughs> true honestly i feel like this year just in general should just be a redo we all stay the exact same age <laughs> just not to sketch year, it we'll just scratch out 2020 on the on in the history books it no. just goes for during we need to keep 2020 because if we collectively agree to scrap 2020, that means donald trump think will think that he is, uh, is deserves a an extra year. I mean, he already does think that. If we don't <laughs> remember our history, we are doomed to repeat it. Well, we already for, we already do we already did yeah, forget our yeah. history. With this is the, the pandemic exactly. is a great example of how we've forgotten history. <laughs> Fucking 1918. It's so funny looking back at that and just being like, "Wow!" Oh, the anti-mask coalition. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We literally did the same thing. The only difference is the access to penicillin. <laughs> literally almost exactly a decade or a century earlier. Yep. Oh, yeah. Almost Weird. exactly. Yeah. Uh, and, I mean, these things come in cycles. I'm sure we'll have another one in a hun another hundred years if we're and still we'll around. Be there because... Uh, I'm well, assuming we're working on uh, I'm assuming that one of the side effects of this vaccination that we get will be immortality. <laughs> if that's the case, I'm throwing myself off a bridge. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, no, uh, we are approaching the singularity uh, where we will be able to uh, upload our consciousness uh, into an artificial body. And uh, uh, yeah, so. Well, so every time this gets bridge. Yeah, every time this gets brought up, I always like to ask everybody, uh, do you uh, do you believe in continuity of consciousness? So, for example, uh, they could po- they, they could say that the singularity happens and your consciousness isn't being uploaded into a robot. It's a perfect copy of your consciousness and you die. So you have no way of knowing until it happens. And even then, after that happens, they're still just going to believe they're that person. Everyone well, gets uploaded could I- die. <laughs> I had no idea you wanted to discuss the plot point of Mega Man Zero. <laughs> <laughs> um, t- I, I guess I did. I just didn't know it. <laughs> the So uh, we are nothing but the collection of our experiences. And the only way that those experiences are stored in our, in our, in our memories. So if those memories, you know, are uh, transplanted elsewhere, uh then I live. You know, I mean, Ooh. that's I interesting. Take. I, uh, yeah, I kind of agree. Because, like, what's the difference? Like, if you copy two files, does it matter which one came first? If you, if let's say there's two exact the same versions of you standing next to each other, you're one, and the other one isn't you, and they shoot you, then you're still alive by that logic. You're just yeah. saying, well, oh, okay. No, I think it means you died and a perfect copy of you lives. To me, uh, I mean, technically speaking, like I it's all that consciousness is the everything that happened to me to that point. And uh, while that exact copy may be missing some of the scrapes and bruises that happened to the, you know, uh, meat vehicle along the way, uh, it still it doesn't make them any less me meat vehicle it's but it's still a perfect copy of you you died and a perfect copy of you exists you exist outside of your copy so therefore your copy is not you exactly sure i i mean i can see that uh fucking ice cream man seriously it's november and it's 50 degrees outside that's the same my Give my address. That gets posed when people talk about like the possibility of teleportation. What if it's just erasing you and creating a perfect copy of you on the other end? Like, you're dying for sure, and a perfect copy of you comes out the other end. But you have no way of knowing that. Right. You you die and you you don't exist anymore. So that nobody else would know that it's not you. It's just exactly the same thing as you. That's the key part of it. Is you have no way of knowing. So yeah, you still you still die though. Yeah, is what I'm yeah, saying. I'm yeah, it, that, I that's, about like it. The, that's like the TNG episode where Riker uh, essentially gets split in the transporter, and they have to deal with the moral problem of like, okay, well, what is this younger version of me? Uh, what are its rights and blah 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 and stuff like that? It's pretty cool. I guess it depends. This on is a whiskey like, conversation. <laughs> does, does your consciousness? travel with your like that's, see, that's the weird thing and so, that's the question that's today, guys like <laughs> it's it's the question you can't answer because the yeah. thing that comes out the other end is going to assume it was you so the possibility is you die perfect copy of you comes out the other end or your consciousness actually is successfully transferred and you continue to live on but there's no way of knowing the difference on the other end and would it be different if your copy did not know that it was a copy? Uh, I'm, if your copy did not know it was a copy, I mean that that's what it's gonna that's what's going to happen, right? Because it's just well, going to assume it was you. In in all of these scenarios, though, where it's it's you and the copy, but like uh, would. Uh, my brain hurts. <laughs> you can even change the way you pose the question, right? Like it could just be, I'm uploading my consciousness into a datascape. Your consciousness, when it hits the datascape, is going to assume, okay, I'm here. Everything was successful, even if it just so happened that you died and it used your, uh, like your information to create a perfect copy of you. What I if you? Just, what if you? To the question: What is consciousness? <laughs> right. And that's the whole argument about continuity of consciousness. 
And that's exactly like what we're getting at. It's kind of, uh, also like plays into the whole uh passage of time thing and and stuff like that where uh you know uh where the theory of every moment of time existing specifically in perpetuity uh so that means that like right now i'm not the same person as when i started the sentence yeah It'll bring that guy back that one that that's not something that's like an important distinction for me at all uh, because we're operating under the assumption that you are a continuous consciousness from the moment you were born until the moment your consciousness ceases to exist. Right. So the whole like, well, a second later, you're not the same you, you were a second before. And like, yeah, that's how things work. Things change with time, but, but you're this, still a continuous consciousness. But me a second before still exists in space and time in perpetuity right but is that is that an important distinction for the continuity of consciousness argument though like i don't know i don't know what you're trying to change in the conversation with so that. i mean uh maybe i don't either <laughs> <laughs> um the I mean, the the whole continuity of consciousness thing um you know, you say uh, your your consciousness is is there uh, and continuous from the moment that you were born until the moment uh, your consciousness ends. But if your consciousness is uh, moved or copied to something else, uh, then uh, your consciousness has not ended. Right. But that's that's the that's the argument that comes into play when you talk about that exact moment. If we assume it's successful and they actually do carry your consciousness into a machine, then yes, your continuity of consciousness has been kept intact. But if you die and they're just creating a perfect copy of it, then you have died and it's just a copy of you going through the state escape. I Doing see what you're saying. You would and believing it's you, but it isn't you. Because hmm. you Sorry. wouldn't actually, you wouldn't uh, at, at, what point, at what point would the copy become its own person, though? Well, I mean, you you would you would just have to go on assuming that it is because there's no way of knowing. Like you would die, and that's the only difference. There's no way of knowing that if you had continued to exist alongside this copy, that your decisions in life would have been the same. So there's exactly. no way to compare the continual existence of the two. Right. Right. And so it's it's not like you would say like, well, if if we assume these things aren't the same person we would have to treat them like a, like a lesser being, but no, you have no way of knowing because if it's a perfect copy of the time that you were erased, it's going to assume it was you. And that whole process was successful. What was that Schwarzenegger movie? Wasn't it called eraser? Totally. Oh, um, or was uh, it a different one? Cause I know that they're the sixth day. That's what it is. I think. Because there, there is one called Eraser. He is in a movie called Eraser. That, uh, yeah. But yeah. he's in a movie that is this kind of idea where there's a clone of him. And uh, yeah. his consciousness has been, you know, transferred to this clone or something like that. I can't remember. It's been fucking forever since I watched it. Okay. With Arnold Schwarzenegger being in all of these heady <laughs> sci-fi movies. Yeah, right. <laughs> yes. I'm not complaining. I mean, I love it, but it's just kind of funny. He is being in like fucking total recall and <laughs> all of these Philip K. Dick adaptations. Yeah. And now Iron Mask. Oh, Jesus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, forgot about that. I downloaded that today. I haven't watched it yet. I heard about oh, it. I forgot. Yeah, I forgot about that. What is it? Uh, Iron Mask is uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jackie Chan. So it be a laugh riot. Yeah, it's it's probably going to be the Rush Hour three of the 17th century. <laughs> is it a comedy? Yeah. Oh, cool. It, I mean, it's it's probably it, you know it's like uh, 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 Shanghai Nights uh, just replace uh, Owen Wilson with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> <laughs> what, what uh what how do you watch it what's it on i think it's in like one of those uh early streaming uh sort of states on voodoo uh because 
uh, I am, I lack a, a, a lot of funds. I, uh, uh, may have found other ways to, uh, uh obtain, uh, such a film. Gas. How dare you? Yo, ho, yo. But the real question is, is it the same movie if it's a copy of a movie? <laughs> <laughs> Or did the original movie cease to exist in the end? No, the real question is, does the you who persists only have a license to use <laughs> your consciousness? Can God the, just turn it off? They don't, they don't actually own your consciousness. They just have a license to it. Is the you who persists... Forced to watch Rush Hour three in your stead, so you don't have to. <laughs> Man, if this if this is just a license, I can't wait for the cloud gaming version of life. <laughs> <laughs> Play life anywhere, even from the grave. Uh, any Christians who are watching are probably saying uh, the cloud gaming version of life is heaven. Uh, no, 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 no. Heaven is not well. Heaven is a place on Earth, according to the Carlisle. <laughs> uh, Heaven's a DLC. Not everyone can afford. <laughs> like the, the the one thing that kind of led to my not believing in all that anymore. One of the major things was the fact that in the Bible, when they talk about heaven, it's supposed to be this super dope place, right? But if, if one of the the selling points is that God wipes away all of your tears. So all the bad memories you have in your life are essentially gone. So I would not be myself, yeah. in, you know, in, in heaven. I would just be a, a praise-giving Jesus robot, and that's not heaven. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of the thing is, uh, and something, you know, while I, uh, you know, say that I I definitely have, you know, some regrets from my history and and things like that. I really like who I am uh, right now. And if you change anything that happened in my life, I'm not that person. So, you know, that's the good, that's the bad, that's everything. And uh, if you remove those things, then what the fuck are you? You know, like... I like a praise-giving robot. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's stupid. That, who the fuck would want that? It, it, removing all the bad things in your life, like, that may sound, at at surface level, like a desirable thing. But oh, yeah, 100%. I mean, even even now, like, if, if I was, you know, presented with a, a, a secular version of that, I'd have to give it some thought, you know? It's the kind of thing that's, like, tackled in Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, right? Like, I've also never seen. Really? You need to see that. Michel Gondry is an incredible director, uh, obviously. Will it, but... make, will it make me sad? Yes. Then I won't watch it anytime soon. <laughs> um, it is a beautiful, beautiful film. Um, but the, it's the whole, you know, are you familiar with the premise of it? Um, Jim Carrey's girlfriend wants to get rid of memories of him cause they broke up or something like that. Uh, the other way around or no, both of them do it. I think because oh, it's like, a okay, but, um, the, it's the whole removing the memories of, of the other person in a relationship. Uh, and, uh, the idea is toyed with in Futurama as well. Uh, in the episode where, um, Fry dies, uh, at, uh, Oktoberfest. Um, oh, yeah, I forgot about that one. the, and Leela eats a fry sausage. Um, the, uh, but it's that kind of, you know, and I guess they don't really play too much with the are you the same person kind of thing. They just play with the can you actually remove these, you know, elements uh, from your life? Can they actually remove these elements from your memory? And can that stick? And uh, in that practice, no. But like, I think that when when you remove the bad or the, you know, whatever, like it, that's going to. It's going right back to the, if you don't remember the past, you're doomed to repeat it. 
it, that's exactly what it is. Like we are pattern matching monkeys. That's that's all we are. If you remove the negative patterns from our brains, then we're going to make different decisions and we're not the same person anymore. Excuse me, I'm a real human person. How <laughs> dare you? I am um, God's gift to Earth. Tyler, how do you know that you're the original Tyler? Yeah, how do you know you're not a perfect copy of Tyler? And how do you know? How do you know you haven't died, and that this is this is the flashback you experience before you lose all sense of life? It's just. <laughs> <laughs> it's just this on loop this is my death loop <laughs> an hour of existential topless robot <laughs> are we in a death loop are we in a death loop are we in a death loop no actually gonna... that game doesn't come out until next year oh. nice <laughs> death loop you gotta get existential sometimes, guys. It's just no, a requirement, totally. you know? <laughs> um, Especially in 2020 when it's making us question everything about life. <laughs> and while this may not necessarily be something that uh, our, uh, a couple of listeners are used to hearing us talk about, I think that these are interesting and important, you know, thought exercises to have and, and like certainly valuable conversations to have because it's, well, I have no way of knowing that they aren't perfect copies of our listeners. So I don't know if I need to respect them anyway. <laughs> Do they exist if we stop thinking about them? <laughs> Recording on Spotify, that's a perfect copy of the live stream. So is it actually us talking? <laughs> if a podcast is played in the woods and no one's there to hear, does it even are, are five white guys even talking? <laughs> The podcast is being played in the forest and no one's around to hear it. Does it have the same amount of listeners? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh -oh. We laugh because otherwise we'd cry. <laughs> uh, honestly, I would uh, love for... Uh, uh, this podcast to be as standing a part of all of our lives that it is one of those things that uh, at least takes up a decent amount of your uh, life flashing before your eyes when you die. You know, your like death panorama. Yeah, yeah. Be like, hey, remember those several yeah. years, uh, several plus years that uh, we talked about gaming and and you know with some of our best friends and, and like uh, I mean, yeah i just i just it, it just hit me and i know it's kind of stupid but yeah we're gonna have like years of <laughs> updates of talking about our lives on the internet for a very as long as youtube exists well so think <laughs> about think about this um this is episode 115 uh each of our episodes is at least an hour uh and i think the longest that we've gone is probably hour 45 so we've got probably a couple hundred hours of us talking on the internet out there crazy and a lot of them are fart jokes <laughs> Hell yeah, brother. Fart jokes. <laughs> Frederick Kroger being stuck in time loops. <laughs> Protons on word salad. Medium. I how many times I've said, I've said the word mega, or mega man. Oh, God. Oh, oh my God. A lot. Can we, quite a few. Can we do a word cloud of all of our podcasts? <laughs> <laughs> Why do you got to give me work? <laughs> I'm Look. worried. When we see each other again in person, I'm not going to recognize you without all the pixels and uh, digital <laughs> Yeah, uh, Tyler's I mean, face is weirdly guarantee. clear. Yeah, I thought there's you no were a blocky person. Ever... <laughs> there's no guarantee that I'm the real me anyway. I'm probably just a copy. So. <laughs> Can you imagine? Now you've just absolved yourself of all guilt. You're not even the real Tyler. It's fine, dude. The the copy that's... Wait, is this how religion's like? <laughs> Silence, Doppel Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> I have been born again. I can do anything I want. <laughs> the, yes, but can, can you? Is your copy even born? 
<laughs> oh, that's a good question. Uh, can you imagine if, uh, like, let's say people. that that copying yourself uh, at let's so it becomes commodity. It becomes something that, um, in order to maintain accessibility, <laughs> has several tiers because that's how these companies do these things. The ultra premium copy package. The ultra premium <laughs> copy package is an exact duplicate of yourself in every way with maybe even like chosen bigger bonuses. Big. Yeah, right? Yeah, like you get to big. you get to do these enhancements, <laughs> right? Let's let's say you get to do these enhancements at the very My very top tier. Serotonin. <laughs> <laughs> Um, My copy doesn't have to take anxiety meds. <laughs> <laughs> you get to uh, erase, you know, certain elements, uh, certain uh, defaults, right, at the very, very high end, and do these like enhancements. Uh, I don't know why I did this uh, it, move from my chest out when I said enhancements. It's we just... now know what Ryan wants to do <laughs> his premium copy. He wants um, two big movies that have also have his face and beard on them. So then, <laughs> what's the entry tier? It's the free package. It's basically the bad doodle from SpongeBob. <laughs> it's a, a Futurama esque head in the jar version of yourself. <laughs> No, I was gonna say you your face has an, like uh, advertisements on it. Yeah, I was gonna to say that that's where I was going to. I, I don't know if any of you guys remember the old uh, ISP Net Zero. Yes, ish. Yes, where he, it was a, it was a free dial-up internet service, but uh, you had to have a banner ad on the screen at all times. So mm. it's it's that kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, that like you you, that you have to have like uh, rotating sponsors uh, tattooed on you or or obviously you'd have, you know, some sort of like uh, no. OLED that's, that's skin. The, that's the second from the bottom. The bottom tier is where they do that. But also every five minutes, your copy just stops whatever it's doing. Stand still and start speaking an advertisement. <laughs> <laughs> A yellow circle start appears on your face. <laughs> you can you can totally play the game by yourself, but like there's things that are extra. Like if you want to have sex to get a bonus, it's like a DLC. You got to pay for it. <laughs> uh, a lot of this, now that I think about it, a lot of this is kind of uh, tackled in the Amazon series upload, uh, where the dude dies and gets uploaded. His consciousness gets uploaded to this afterlife. And uh, there are these people who have to pay uh, like for their sessions or, or for session hours or whatever. And so or they pay for their bandwidth, basically. And so once they run out of bandwidth, they're just frozen until the next month. Oh, weird. Yeah, that would be really creepy to walk around in a real life. <laughs> You're like at the mall and there's just half the people are just like. <laughs> but it's like it, it, and it's really interesting it's, it's like um uh and you have to be real careful with how you spend your time because everything takes up bandwidth so like reading a book or you know like throwing a ball that that all takes bandwidth so if you've got just a little bit of bandwidth left you just start an activity and then and that's that man so it's basically, what would life be like if Cox owned your owned Yeah, the world? right. <laughs> Christ. Or now, uh, who the fuck is it? Spectrum, I think, is is now uh, implementing their uh, their data caps on their on their customers. Yeah. Fucking dumb. Like, think about these ISPs need to look out at the world right now. Realize that you know, ninety percent of the workforce is working from home. And uh, instead of charging a premium, uh, be like, look, we're just going to kill data caps. Cox actually did that for the first couple of months of, of this uh, of the pandemic. Uh, but I Ryan, you forget people see this as the perfect opportunity to make their companies richer. So that's what they're going to do. Yes, because force for good. Now they're going to monetize it. That's what <sighs> I said. Assholes who bought all those PS5s. Capitalism. 
Yeah, we didn't touch on that. Uh, the group who bought, uh, they have more stock of PS5s than most uh, retailers. They have 3,500 uh, PS5s. Fucking dumb. And uh, um, they uh, uh, say they have no regrets. They say, uh, yeah. you know. Of course not. Uh, a lot of their team are people who were furloughed uh, or uh, lost their jobs due to the pandemic and are doing this in order to uh, you know make ends meet. Uh, and uh, while their actions may mean that some kid doesn't have a PS5 under their tree, but uh, they, it also means that a kid will have something under his tree where otherwise there would not have been anything. Um, now, oh my god, gag me with a fucking spoon! Wow, I did not re- I did not realize you had full Valley Girl in you. <laughs> scalpers are all virgins. They ain't got no kids. <laughs> <laughs> no, so the the problem with that is that in order to buy these systems like they're they're using these bots to snag these systems that requires a huge initial investment and risk mm-hmm. so that means that, that you know let's say you bought 10 fucking you know PS5s to resell at a premium you just dropped 5 grand at, at, at in hoping to to make it ten, like what the fuck? Yeah. Scalpers are going to use any excuse to try and make themselves seem like heroes. They Scalper. need to be robbed of their kneecap privileges. Scalpers <laughs> are scum. Period. Yes. End of story. Scalpers are scum. Even if you're helping pay your bills for your kids, quote unquote, like no, you're scum. Yeah. It's not yeah. Excuse. Yeah. When, yeah, you yeah. had to buy, you know, you bought 20 PS5s and you're trying to make a buck off of someone else. You know, you're probably not, not the best kind of person to begin with. Yeah, when when your uh, investment is buying multiple $500 things, then you're not in a position to uh, be worried about what's under the Christmas tree. Yep. Well, and like, those, those people are also fucking with you know, the PS5 in general, because like, you know, launch, right? There's like, what, 3,500 PS5s that are just sitting there that haven't been used. Like, they're not going to be able to figure out like bugs they got to fix as effectively or anything like that. They're not going to be able to get the consumer feedback because no one's playing it because, yeah. like, you know, a couple of greedy assholes decided to make a buck off of other poor people. So, and it should go without saying, uh, don't buy from scalpers. Don't buy it. Just wait. Sony's going to make more. It's it's worth waiting for, uh, yeah. as opposed Don't to give those fuckers your money, buying, dude. spending double what you would pay if you just waited for Sony to put more stock in stores, which they're prioritizing. And this happens all the time. I feel like this is the most it's been visible. Uh, but like, God damn, man, like. Fuck scalpers. You got to make them like the toilet paper hoarders. Don't don't let them return or don't buy any of these things from them. You know, Force just let them, them have a garage full of PS5 exactly. forever that they just wasted money on. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you know, Only you have the power to fuck a scalper in the ass. <laughs> like, like I get if you want to, you know, get the next gen console for your kid and, and do something good for Christmas for them or, or whatever. But like, just don't just, you know, be like, here's an I O U. Yeah, so that's what my mom did one year. She's <laughs> like, uh, when I was younger, she really wanted to get me the Nintendo Wii. And she's literally like, there's there. They don't exist. Here's some money. Just hold on to the money until there's a, a Wii and you can buy it. <laughs> yeah. And you said, I hate you, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like- not even the right color. <laughs> <laughs> it's money, son. God, there's it just, only one color. <laughs> it makes me think of uh, that uh, Bobcat Goldthwait uh, film uh, because Films made by Bobcat Goldthwait are delightfully dark. Uh, one of them being World's Best Dad or World's Greatest Dad. 
world's greatest dad, I think, uh, with Robin Williams, where his son I kills himself. And yeah, it's an incredible film. Uh, another one is called God Bless America. And it's a guy and a young girl who go around killing people uh, who are uh, entitled Americans. Uh, oh, yeah. And uh, one of those is a like some 16 year old influencer or some shit or some reality show star is 16 who gets a, uh, you know, some like hundred thousand dollar plus supercar and it's the wrong color and she throws a tantrum. I like, forgot about that movie. Yeah. Bobcat Goldthwait is a uh, uh, dark comedy genius. There is a uh, something great with this world that someone is named Bobcat Goldthwait. <laughs> I know it's a fucking nickname, but is it? I just love it. What's it his is. What's his birth name? Robert, Robert Frank Goldthwait. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually short for Robert Bobcat. Francis. <laughs> <laughs> Robert Cat. Uh, Robert Cat. <laughs> Hello there, Robert Cat. Robert Cat. <laughs> if he were ever to be knighted, Sir Robert Cat. <laughs> Start playing with the sword. <laughs> oh man, yeah, Bobcat oh. Goldthwait's been fucking great. Uh, I'm trying Speaking to. Of- entertainment <laughs> smooth segue yeah <laughs> nice. speaking of entertainment as we <laughs> often do that segue could be literally placed anywhere in any of our podcasts That's the perfect segue <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you <laughs> but, uh, i got the hyrule warriors the the new one oh age of calamity been, yeah yeah i have been playing it a fuck ton and it is great. I love it. It's. I played the demo and I really enjoyed it. And apparently, um, Bandai uh, is like, no one's ever bought this many Warriors games. Really? Yeah. I didn't see that. That's yeah. I mean, it makes sense. It is the deepest Warriors game that I've ever played. Like, I played quite a few. Like, it's. I'm like 15 hours in and I'm on like chapter two. Like, <laughs> And also like as, as far as Dynasty Warrior style games go, like they're making the right choice by taking the formula, but appealing to a wider audience instead right. of just people who care about Imperial China. Yeah, I would argue <laughs> that people that who care about Gundams. Yeah, True. I was going to say, I, uh, I would argue that uh, probably their uh, it would have to be their second best seller. Uh, aside from the Hyrule Warriors series, is their Gundam series because the Gundam series uh, series that they did in a warrior style was great as well. Just, I wonder how that Fire Emblem one sold. They did one for that too. Oh, I didn't know I that. Forgot about that. I forgot they did that. That was actually fairly recent, wasn't it? One other property that didn't they recently? I wonder. Uh, I don't know. Even know how to look this up. Warriors games. <laughs> Fire Emblem Warrior game. Fire Emblem oh, Warrior. hey, that works. 2017 was when it came out. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how it sold, though. Spinoffs. Dynasty Warriors Gundam. Warriors Orochi. Fist of the North Star. Mm. Fist of the North Star. Oh, Warrior. One that Piece. Cool. Pirate Warriors. I think that's yeah, the name of a... And they did Berserk. Oh, it is a Mosa. There's a lot. Holy shit, there's a lot. Wow. Persona 5. Persona 5 Scramble, a crossover between the series and Atlas's 2016 uh, role-playing game, Persona 5. Jesus. Yeah, B- Bandai has their, their hands in a lot of a lot of licensed pies. Yeah, no kidding. But yeah, Hyrule... They're called Money Pies. Or no, it's not Bandai. It's Koei Tecmo. That's, I was trying to remember. I was like, I know it's not Namco, but Bandai and Namco are the same thing, but Bandai sounds right. You know, it's Koei Tecmo. Mm. But, yeah, Age of Calamity is just brilliant. It's a lot of fun. It's It plays like... It's, it's kind of cool that because they kind of dropped a Warriors game into Breath of the Wild's engine. So, like, you can cut down trees, like, you're using the fucking um, uh, Sheikah Slate. Yeah, to, the, like, like, Magnesis and the... 
ice yeah. and all that and the bombs. And bombs and every single character has a different way that that manifests so it's like link will just throw a whole bunch of bombs uh zelda would will make this giant uh bomb robot that you control and each it just you can just walk it over and that then sounds explode awesome it in the middle yeah it's fucking sick and i love like, uh in the demo playing as impa yeah impa's a blast impa's fucking sweet and uh yeah and i'm I'm right now my favorite is actually daruk the the um oh my god goron my goron. goron thank you uh he's he like he he'll basically just create pillars of magma that you could explode everywhere oh nice <laughs> And then, like, he'll make, a, like, one of his techniques, he, like, swings, and then he'll make a ramp that's made of magma, and then he rolls into a ball, spins up it, slams down on the ground, and then you can blow up the ramp, and it's fucking cool. <laughs> but yeah, it's, and, like, the story's pretty fun. They have the fully voiced cutscenes, like Breath of the Wild did. Um, it's, you know, going through the background of what happened 100 years ago. If you played Breath of the Wild, obviously, most of us have. But yeah, I fucking love it. It's it's great. It is a lot of fun and definitely the best Musa Warriors game that I've ever played. It yeah, it looks rigid. like a great game. And I enjoyed the demo. So it's something that I plan on getting at some point. Uh, probably it's it's not high on my priority list, though. Uh, it's something that I'll I'll definitely get to. Um, I ended up uh, picking up um, squadrons. Uh, Star Wars Squadrons on sale, uh, which as of this recording, this live broadcast, it is 40% off already. Uh, on PlayStation or? On, on, on I bought it on PC because I wanted to play it in VR. And uh, holy shit, I never want to fucking fly a goddamn TIE fighter. Huh. Flying X-Wings is so much better than flying TIE fighters because in TIE fighters, your your field of view, like you've got periphery, but all your periphery shows is inside the cockpit. Um, the actual view is just like a window in front of you. So you're really limited in what you can see. And it's kind of boring for a space battle because half the fun of doing a VR space battle is being able to like physically look and track your, you know, track things around you. And in the X-Wing, it's a more open windowed cockpit. So all around you is windows. So you can actually okay. like look up and, and see what's going on behind you when you're in that cockpit. Uh, I, I hate flying uh, TIE fighters. <laughs> But it just means you're it's a fun. Good guy it yeah. looks cool. It is pretty fun. Uh, it's gotten kind of Decent. middle of the road response uh, from from people. Uh, critics uh, have uh, rated it pretty decently, but yeah, it's like seven to, seven out of ten. It looks like so. It's a it's fun time. Dollars, you know, as long as it's competent. Flight flight sim games, I mean, are they're always going to get boring at some point because you know it's like a first person shooter but less interesting. Uh, <clears throat> but I mean, you know, I, I used to play a lot of stuff like that growing up as a kid, and as long as it holds up, you know, dude, I could cockpit fly in in space uh, in VR uh, for fucking ever. Um, <sighs> it's one of the things that I love about No Man's Sky is mm. just. Being in it in VR in space, it gives you a different sense of scale than any other VR experience would. And it, it just feels incredible. It absolutely feels so incredible and immersive. The only now thing that kind of threw me out. off was uh, it doesn't support the the touch controllers it doesn't support the the trackable controllers so you don't you're not like navigating things in in your cockpit uh it only supports gamepad so <laughs> it's kind of an immersion breaker but it's still fun i wonder if it would uh would uh, support like those flight sticks that you can get oh that would actually be pretty cool i think it does uh so i was talking to somebody about about it i think or watching some video about it and they were talking about the being able to use the flight controls 
That would be sick. They should make a. They should make their own like special ones that have like Tie Fighter, <laughs> Tie Fighter, or uh, X Wing controls on it. <laughs> so the Tie Fighters and X Wings uh, control differently, uh, where the X Wings have uh, a stick. So you'd basically be doing the normal center stick sort of thing, but the Tie Fighters uh, have different yeah. thing. You know, a different thing for each hand. So yeah. They wouldn't necessarily be able to do a hardware solution for that. But I mean, you know, regardless, uh, it's a it's a fun time and it's very, very pretty in VR. It really is immersive and pretty in VR as long as you're in an X-Wing. <laughs> I want to play. What have you been playing, Dan? Uh, so a lot of the same stuff, but I picked up a new game uh it's a four player roguelike game called Barony. And uh Sounds familiar. Why do I know? Very that? very like minimalist graphics, but it's essentially just uh like a DD style dungeon delving game. Uh but with a lot more of like the mediocrity of being a low level character instead of the power of being a high level one. Hmm. Uh it's very easy to die immediately. Like you walk out of the first room and get killed by the first thing that sees you. Um but it has hunger mechanics and a lot of different classes and weapons and everything. Uh, it's very fun to play with people uh, as long as they're people who don't get frustrated by dying all the time. <laughs> so it's <laughs> tedi- least, uh, it's tedium the game. It's it's right up your alley. Except it's not it's not really tedious. It's actually really fast paced because um, the combat isn't turn based like a D and D would be. It's, it's more like uh, action. So okay. You actually do like have to time your attacks and you can power attack by holding the mouse button down. You can sneak, get backstabs on stuff. Um, but uh, there's all of the sound effects in that game are great because I think every sound effect was just made by like some dude's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what the was the thing are... that we said that we were going to do a completely <laughs> an entire sound pack for? Well, the one we joked about originally was Doom. I don't know if we ever talked about doing it for anything else. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, it was Doom. It was Doom. Um, it's great, though, because you can find yourself in basically the underground gnome labyrinth. I just call it the gnome zone. And uh, <laughs> gnomes are very lethal. And they're like the funny type. Like, they all have white beards and red hats. and But you can hear them through the walls when you know gnomes are around. They just go like, chip, 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 chip. <laughs> you just hear them all around you making that noise. And then a gnome wizard will kick the door in and shoot a fireball at you and kill you immediately. <laughs> what are, it's a great game. What are the visuals like? Is it uh, like uh, Space Station 13 kind of thing or is it? No, it's it's a 3D game. Okay. Um, so it's I'm a 3D just... game. It's very like chunky. It's got like a. <laughs> Looks like very crafty. Yeah, but it's it's more uh, it's everything is less blocky like they tried more definition by having smaller blocks instead of like big blocky minecraft characters so uh high um, definition low res kind of uh, aesthetic kind of yeah right on it's a great game i i love it i've gotten so much time out of it especially like most roguelikes if you play it on your own it's a lot different because you can take it at your own pace when you're playing with friends though like you're all working on your hunger mechanic and trying not to die because you can just starve to death in that game hmm and if you take too long, the Minotaur comes out of the labyrinth and kills you in a single hit. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Spelunky rules. <laughs> Kinda, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I've gotten to the last boss two times and died in a single hit every time I've gotten to him. I have no idea how you're supposed to beat him. <laughs> you're gonna have to have like, a really, really lucky run. But, hey, <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> right on. Nice. How about you, Brooks? Uh, well, I got RE3 yesterday and played a little bit of that. Um, played a little Tyco this, this week with Zeke. Uh, that was fun. Um, and this is the time of the year that I'm most nostalgic for Mega Man Legends, so I fired that up today. It's the most Mega Man oh of the year. <laughs> well, I'm playing Mega Man Legends 2 because those controls in the first one suck ass. Two is the is the is so polished, they killed it. But I remember the man on the moon. I remember when when I was a kid, like in my youth group church thing, we, we did an outing into Flagstaff for the lava tubes and stuff like that. 
And we stopped at the mall, so uh, I popped into GameStop and I happened to find a copy and I spent all of the spending money that I was given for food on Mega Man Legends 2. Nice. (laughs) And so... This is the only sustenance I require. (laughs) I starved for Mega Man. (laughs) What are you playing it on? Uh, I have it on my PS3. Oh, yeah, I have it. I, I keep it in my room, so I just, yeah. I, I had. I don't know where where my disc copy of it is, unfortunately. But one of I still own. remember that battered jewel case coming home with me from Flagstaff. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Kalen? What have you been playing? Um, I just finished Doom 2016, and uh, so then I've been playing uh, Elder Scrolls Online. It's oh. super cheap right now on PlayStation. At least it was for the Black Friday sale. Um, I think that's still going on. Yeah, the all it's the base game and all the DLC plus the new one for like twenty bucks. So, uh, and you don't need like a member. I, I, what kept me from it for a long time was thinking that you need like a monthly membership and you don't. Um, oh, sweet. So, uh, yeah, I just kind of I been started, around in that. I started playing that a few years ago, and it just never stuck. I don't know. MMOs don't stick. I I, I keep bouncing back into. You know, I'll, I'll yeah. bounce back into World of Warcraft every once in a while or, you know, shit like that. But like MMOs just don't stick for me. I'm sure it'll be pretty temporary. Most most likely because I like unless I'm playing with a group of friends, I'm playing alone. And yeah, uh, it playing was, MMOs without a gang is boring. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the only MMO that I ever really got into was Lord of the Rings online. <laughs> And because me and my buddy just played Lord of the Rings online, like nonstop forever. Nice. Beyond that, I, I did play a little of the old Republic, which was a lot of fun. That one actually has a story. So it was actually fun to play by yourself. So my uh, old landlord, uh, before I uh, moved here, uh, uh, worked on uh, Dark Age of Camelot. Oh, shit. That's cool. Right? Yeah. Um, the, uh, oh, uh, something I, uh, forgot. I beat, uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales, uh, this week, uh, got a hundred percent in it and, uh, just started the new game plus. Uh, so I, because there are specific things that are only unlocked in new game plus. Uh, so like there's one suit that you can only, uh, unlock in new game plus. There are, uh, three skills that are only available in New Game Plus, and uh, uh, each gadget has an upgrade point that's only in New Game Plus. Like, there's a ton of uh, New Game Plus upgrades, um, mm. and it's it's great. I mean, su- surprising no one, it's an outstanding game. Um, it's gorgeous, uh, and with it being so. The new thing that we're going to see a lot of in this new generation of gaming is being able to choose whether you're prioritizing fidelity or frame rate. And uh, one of the like I just usually chose fidelity uh, on console games because usually with console games, like I don't even think about frame rate. But when you're on fidelity in uh, Spider-Man, it's locked at 30. It's locked at 30 frames per second. So uh, when you switch to frame rate, jumping to 60, God, that's so super smooth and it looks absolutely gorgeous on a nice big ass 77 inch, you know, OLED at 60 frames. It's, it's pretty, unfortunately my TV doesn't support 120. So I like, I don't get to see like uh, on the Xbox series X or in the willow of the wisps at 4k 120 which I imagine would be even more mind blowing. But uh, the stark difference in gameplay uh, between fidelity and frame rate on uh, Miles Morales, once I flipped it, that was it. Like I was on frame rate the the rest of the playthrough. I always go for frame rate, man. It's just one of those things. 30 frames, really pretty is fine, but the smoothness just makes all the difference, you know? It really does. It, it, It... so while it may be nice for it to look a little bit prettier and have some ray tracing and shit like that, doctor, um, it's 
it like Give that those dog. god peter lori ass eyes <laughs> um <laughs> The well, it may be nice for it to look pretty while you're playing. It doesn't impact gameplay, and frame rate does. This is correct. I'm distracted. That's the right answer. I'm distracted by the dog. I did not listen to you. (laughs) All right, right. I heard you. (laughs) Not even one word. (laughs) Look, Spider-Man Miles Morales is fucking great. That's 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 what you need to take away from that. It's it's a great story. Uh, It's wonderfully told and it's fun as hell. Um, Miles Morales and his fucking venom shock, you know, thing. And and, uh, his uncle Predator uh, is uh, in it or Prowler, sorry, uh, is in it. uh, And it's just great. Uncles do tend to be predators. (laughs) (laughs) I can I feel like every time we get to the end of the podcast and I really have to go to the bathroom, you keep talking about Spider-Man. So uh, <laughs> the, 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 my favorite outfit, there, there are a bunch of great suits, a bunch of really great suits. Uh, probably actually one of the coolest things that you can do in uh, Miles Morales is they have a suit for uh, Spider-Verse with a suit mod uh, and a visor mod that uh, puts Biff Bam Pow uh, comic book uh, things when you're punching people. And then it also has a suit mod that lowers the frame rate of Spider-Man himself to match Spider-Verse. That, I've seen that. It looks fucking cool. It's fucking yeah. rad. But my favorite okay. suit was the Spider-Man 2020 suit where he's got this Daft Punk helmet and yeah. like an LCD chest piece yeah. that like when you're damaged, it's flickering and 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 shit like that. And it just yeah. looks yeah. rad. It looks super rad. I want it. It's great. I highly recommend. It's available for PS4. Yeah. I, I'm just going to wait till I get a PS5. <laughs> Uh, how many different ways can we uh, make Brooks uh, wait to pee? Hmm. Oh, we got one. Are we going to filibuster? <laughs> We're going to filibuster. You know what happened to me, Ryan? What's Remember that? earlier in the year we talked about Neo 2 was supposed to come out on the PC in November? Yep. That never happened, and I don't it, think it's ever going to. Well, ever? Oh, like, they're not going to release it for I, PC at all? They have said nothing about it. Huh. Nothing. So, I recently I, I, started playing Neo One on uh, uh, PS4. So good. I'm gonna play the second one. So fucking bad, but I don't want to play my PS4. <laughs> <laughs> it says that it's on on Steam. It's now it's saying uh, Feb coming February fifth, twenty twenty one. Did they finally say something about it? Okay, good. Because I kept, like, all this month, I kept looking. Like, is Neo 2 coming to PC? Is Neo 2 coming to PC? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, now it says the f- complete, you can actually pre-purchase the complete edition on Steam, and it's coming def- on February 5th. Oh, finally. And finally. Uh, Cyberpunk 2077 uh, on all the digital distribution platforms is showing our release date of December 9th. So we will probably uh, see it playable uh, the day before its actual release day on these digital distribution platforms like Steam and uh, Epic Game Store. Uh, so looking forward to that. Uh, I'm, I think I'm probably going to buy it on PC first before or actually, no, I take that back. I went to pre-order it on PS5 because the PS5 controller is truly otherworldly. Um, And uh, I didn't see a pre-order for it on PS5. I only saw a pre-order for PS4. So I don't know if their PS5 original, like natural release is being delayed or is coming out later and they're focusing on ps4 and xbox one i think first. i heard that the next gen updates for it aren't going to be on launch brooks you're a part of this podcast get in frame <laughs> <laughs> i know it's great <laughs> No, it's not. <laughs> I know you just want to get Cyberpunk on the PS5 for the haptic feedback I in the sex super, scenes. I super, I suit, yes, 
exactly <laughs> that. No, I want to see how they implement uh, the adaptive triggers. Uh, the adapt, like the haptic haptic feedback is lovely and it, it's nice and all, but the s- thing that really is game changing are the adaptive triggers. So I'm I'm excited to see the implementation there. Good. As long as we don't have to deal with a uh, miss the podcast because he's in the hospital with a PS5 controller stuck in his ass. <laughs> Look, I've had plenty of practice. I no longer have to go to the hospital when that I'll, happens. I'll get it out. <laughs> the, the ridges on the PS5 controller are squares, triangles, X's, and circles, like almost microscopic. I didn't realize that that was my kink until I gave it a try. Rip. <laughs> Ribbed for Ryan's pleasure. <laughs> you damn right. <laughs> Here, Brooks, go pee. Oh, no. I'm going to hold it now. Fuck you. <laughs> All right, that's the end of the episode. <laughs> See you later, everybody. <laughs>